speaker is Sam White. He is the CBO of MROD and co-founder and director of Greentown Labs, the largest clean tech incubator in the US, which houses almost a hundred clean tech startups. Sam's presentation today is Power Anywhere, the future of wireless power distribution. Take it away, Sam. Thank you so much, Deborah. All right, so as Deborah mentioned, um, MROD is commercializing uh, long range wireless power transfer. And for many of you, probably one of the first things that comes to mind uh, when you when we think about um, wireless power is yes, Nikola Tesla. Uh, that was his original dream. Uh, and what is enabling MROD to commercialize this technology is uh, the it just advanced technologies in radar and materials that have come from organizations like NASA uh, and the Japanese Space Agency. Um, they, so we're using that as a launching pad to create our own IP and technology to use near field uh, microwave, uh, uh, which is the safest form, uh, to uh, kind of cheat the system and extend it for miles. Um, so it's microwave transmission. Uh, we're using uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, uh, as the actual uh, power beam. Uh, this is unlicensed ISM. Uh, the main difference between what we're doing and what communications towers does is that you know what they're doing is kind of scattering the microwave uh, throughout the environment and where we are have a controlled columnated uh, beams uh, in parallel that it that is safe uh, and um, that can can go very large different distances and I explain I can explain more about the technology and the efficiencies uh, later on um, so what is the the main problem that we're looking to resolve here. Um, you know, basically, energy needs to be moved from where it's easily and economically produced to where it's required. Um, and we currently resolve the problem through distribution lines, uh, which has served us well so far, but as uh, climate change uh, more and more is, is impacting our in grid infrastructure from hurricanes to wildfires, um, there needs to be a, a better solution. Um, I wanna give you just one number that, that will just, uh, if you don't take anything else away from this presentation, uh, what, what do you think the cost is for PG&E to underground their, their distribution lines? The cost is $3 million per mile and that's what they're they're going to have to do to you know prevent that these wires from causing the the, the wildfires um what happens after uh, a hurricane in puerto rico like they're not going to immediately um set up a power grid uh so mrod can come in and literally put up their uh their antennas and relatively instantly um, replace the need for um, uh, rebuilding the, the di dis distribution lines in, after, after a, a, an, an event like that. Um, and so let me get into the technology and how we do that. Um, so there are two main parts of our technology, the transmitting antenna, uh, which is taking microwave, uh, trans we're transferring DC power into microwave energy, uh, which those, the, the beams that you see across there are, are microwave beams um, that hit the uh, receiving antenna, uh, which is a rectenna, taking the 5.8 gigahertz of power and smoothing it out into DC uh, DC power, which can then be uh, inverted uh, using an inverter, putting it in, in AC 
or directly powering um, a, a battery and leaving it in DC. Um, each, I, you see the highlighted yellow uh, is, is kind of demonstrating that each antenna is made up of identical elements. Uh, and each, so the element on the transmitting side is directly linked to the uh, corresponding element on the rectenna side. So it is a controlled um, beam that uh, is, is always focused on the other element. So, you know, if uh, it, it weren't, uh, the whole thing would shut off if, the, if they're not, if they aren't directly aligned. And that is where a lot of our P and our efforts have been focused on is ensuring that alignment. Um, so the range uh, of, our, of, of this power is directly uh, related to the size of the antenna. The, the larger the size, the, the farther it can go. Uh, but part of our I, IP and technology is to have um, passive relays that are essentially lossless uh, to extend and redirect the power over mountainous areas. And so this can double the range using the same size antenna. Um, and so let's talk about efficiency. Um, if you, a lot of, there are a lot of doubters uh, from, the, uh, from the scientific, uh, community that says you know the efficiency just will keep MROD within a niche industry and currently that's true uh, we have uh, built our first prototype and we frankly weren't focused on efficiency but we have a roadmap that will bring us to 85 to 90 90 percent efficiency. Uh, the biggest challenge uh, in, that, in that roadmap is transferring DC power to microwave. Um, and we have, um, we have discovered a revolutionary technology uh, that amplifies that power in a much faster, bigger, and a more efficient way that will take us from 60% today to 95%. Uh, in that in that uh, trend um, conversion to microwave power, and so we're we're really excited about about that uh, part of the technology. Uh, a lot of people ask us about safety. Um, we have a so just like power lines are uh, set up so they're they're high above people who are walking uh, under the the wires. The same thing with us. Uh, this will be uh, high up, uh, not, not close to the ground, uh, but then people talk about what happens when a bird flies through. So we have a safety mechanism. It's a, it's a, a safety curtain that will instantly shut off uh, the singular beam or multiple beams that that bird crosses. Um, so it won't impact the whole the whole system, but it'll impact only the, the beams that that bird flies through. Now keep in mind, we are way under the permissible microwave levels. Uh, so even if a bird perched there for 10 minutes, nothing would happen to that bird. Um, but just for optical reasons, we have that safety curtain um, and there is nothing for that bird to, to perch on because we need a clear line of sight uh, to, to take power from the transmitting and an, uh, antenna to the receiving ant antenna. Um, so if you look at some of the use cases, we can go over water to, um, uh, to power communities that have never been powered before over, uh, over islands. Um, uh, in critical infrastructure that needs to be powered without diesel diesel generators, um, you know, just to maintain these diesel generators uh, and protect it from theft is a huge maintenance ex in expense that, can, that we can uh, do away with. Um, I mentioned before uh, disaster relief uh, after a hurricane takes down distribution wires, 
uh, uh, we facilitate the uptake of uh, power and wind by enabling them to transfer the power that's produced uh, in areas that have always been way too challenging and uneconomical to place, uh, such as in oceans and mountains. Um, and we completely do away with uh, easements and right, right of ways uh, because you're not, um, you're not clearing trees, uh, you're not destroying um, uh, the, uh, the floor of, uh, of the, the, the ocean or the, the, the river beds uh, with our technology. Um, and the list goes on and on in terms of use cases. You know, ports are desperate for this because uh, they don't have enough space for ships to come in and power uh, their batteries so we can wirelessly power their, their ships. Mining uh, and drilling are all uh, electrifying their equipment. Uh, and so as they move from one place to another, our system can easily follow them. Um, where we are today in the roadmap, uh, we have our first cu uh, customer, uh, which is the second largest uh, utility company in New Zealand called PowerCo. Um, uh, and we are actually um, uh, have decided that this is really, because of the impact this is going to have on, um, on the people uh, throughout the world, uh, we're, we've decided to do a crowdfunding campaign uh, that um, will enable people to, um, to invest in this. Uh, if you want more information, uh, here's the email that you can send uh, inf uh, an email to to get information about that crowdfunding, as well as you know, we can send you a lot more technical details about how the system works. Uh, just go to info at emrod.energy. This was absolutely fascinating. And um, I really, I, I am so excited by the possibilities, not just for remote areas that can use power, but for areas like you had mentioned that, um, you know, may, maybe at risk of fire or other things from lines. So this is really exciting. Um, I'll certainly want to follow up to get more information and I'm sure others exactly. will as well. So thank you for this really unbelievable talk um, yeah. presentation. My pleasure. Thanks, Emma. Thank you.